burden of the devil. Say, I am a blessing. Don't mind how you feel. Say it again. Say, I am a blessing. This is a healthy indoctrination that you need. Else you will not be able to survive in today's world. Pastor, you are a blessing. Don't tell me how many members you have. While you trust God for growth, recognize that even in that place, that church, you may not be the individual that people seem to be seeking around, but know this, that I'm a blessing. I'm not a burden to my world. I'm not a curse to my world. Someone shout it again, say, I'm a blessing. Genesis chapter 4, we read that earlier on verse 2. The Bible says that Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. A tiller of the ground. A tiller of the ground. You may not have the, the privilege of being called into the apostolic or the prophetic ministry, but see yourself as a counselor with nobility. Do not see yourself less. And sometimes, as ministers of the gospel, we need to be careful the way we downplay and demean other functionaries within the body. There is a way you... It's, it's the same way with all due respect. Sometimes politicians sell certain offices. It makes certain offices look too... They over... Uh, they exaggerate certain things and they make people not comfortable where they are. They want to desire certain things and they begin to fight and kill for it. By the time you give an impression that if you are not an apostle or a prophet or a pastor, I don't know what you are doing in the kingdom of God. Now, you see, that, that, that idea already categorizes certain people and it puts them in certain uncomfortable positions. So, ministers of the gospel, we owe it to ourselves to appreciate the diversity within the body and to do it vocally so. Especially when you are in a position by the mercy of God where the nations can celebrate you. You would be in the best position to recognize and acknowledge others because now you are leveraging on that influence to make others feel good. Don't make people feel uncomfortable because you have arrived. No. In this place right now, watch this. There are media people all across this beautiful place. Are we together? Whilst I'm preaching, they are aiding your understanding. If I mention a scripture with skill and intelligence, as anointed as you think I am, put me behind that laptop and see how I mess up your viewing experience. <laughs> see that? And it would be foolish of me to not acknowledge the presence of such people. When I came in, I heard worship going on and there were lovely people dancing. I mean, look the beauty in this place. Someone's creativity is the reason why we are comfortable here. Do you know that individual is as important as the preacher who is preaching? Say, I am a blessing. One more time, say it again. I am a blessing. Apostle, I may never have the opportunity to hold the mic at Rima Fest, but do not downplay your contribution. It is why some of us were able, I took a, a nice, uh, you know, glass of water somewhere. I was well taken care of in the green room. How do you downplay that creativity? They arrived here before me. They dressed up the place before my arrival. So you do not acknowledge the grace of God upon my life at the expense of their own relevance. I'm only in Kenya for two days and I return back. How about the pastors that labor over the people who are now here represented? How do you downplay them because you believe an anointed man of God just came? It would be foolish for me to believe that I can downplay all the pastors, the prophets, the intercessors, the prayer groups. You see that? When God gives you a position of honor, a position of grace, I mean, some gentlemen, I think there are some Ugandas, where are they? Those my lovely guys. Now, they did something. They made a beautiful portrait. They found everyone, you know, people who had imparted upon my life, and then they put their own portraits too. They made one for me and one for Reverend Julian. As soon as I arrived, I was just trying to catch my breath, and these gentlemen came. That is uniqueness there. Ask me to draw you and see what I will produce. 
walk up to 10 people and speak from the depth of your heart say you are a blessing and I need your blessing go ahead you are a blessing I need that blessing that is upon your life don't tell me what is not working in your ministry man of God you are a blessing I know you listen to my messages but you are a blessing come on now appreciate the unique expression of God's grace as a diplomat you are a blessing the cure to envy God bless you now you return to your seat give Jesus a loud shout of praise hallelujah are we together God bless you now look up please look how healing that sounds even just what you just did now do you know you just delivered someone so I'm this valuable I pray for you you pray for me I love you I need you to suffer I won't harm you with words from my mouth hold on I hope you meant that line of the song because some of you have torn others in pieces you've used your mouth to tear businesses tear churches down may this be a repentance service for you listen members too have to be careful they are the ones who join the heads of pastors together Saul killed 2,000 David killed 10,000 oh dear Saul and Saul says where is David let me kill him the women cause that trouble. Now, now, women, I love you. I'm, I mean, the women in the Bible. <laughs> Are we together? They began to sing, honestly celebrating a valiant man. And they said, Saul killed how many thousand? One thousand. Now David has killed ten thousand. And the news got to Saul. Ah. So, I think we need to kill this man. Listen, we must be careful even how we express the things that we call testimony in church. With all due respect, and I don't mean to bruise your ego, it's too early, I'm just arriving. But, 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 help me round up on time. But, just, let me just have your attention. Don't come and give a testimony like we were turning a bus from different churches. Then there was an accident and I was the only survivor and it is because of the prophetic word Joshua Selman gave over my life that may be a sincere testimony but these are the kinds of trouble we cause Kenya help men of God love one another are we together don't go around downplaying the investment of God's grace upon another preacher as a way of demonstrating the excellency of another person's work. No, don't do that. Remember, we're still dealing with the commonwealth thing. Within the fold, everyone wins, even when one wins. Did you hear what I said? Within the fold, everyone wins, even when one wins. I can share in the victory of Reverend Julian, even though I have no business with what I saw there. But it becomes my business because he's my brother. And if you have a problem with that, then uh, talk to our father. I think he's the, the person, the best person in that position. So I can celebrate what he's doing genuinely, not pretentiously, genuinely. Are we together now? You are a blessing. I told myself this right from before God lifted me. Genesis 12 and verse 3. In thee. I'm speaking here to a man of God who is always angry when he sees another man of God with greater grace. Find comfort. You are equally valuable. There is a space for you in God's program. Are we together? The reason why you do not find a whale in an aquarium is because there's no space for the whale there. If the whale is a whale indeed, go to the ocean. Leave the aquarium peacefully. And let the fishes that have the size enough for the aquarium. A whale does not beautify a house, unfortunately. 
So don't say you are too small. You are just exact for the beauty of a room. <laughs> Who is God speaking to? Apostle, I just have five members. And uh, I don't know why I, I, I can't become like so and so. Well, if you can build those five members to be the five billionaires, the five apostles, the five prophets in Kenya, you would have become the most successful man of God known in history. It's amazing how that we look away from all that God has done in our lives and we begin to admire others to a point of envy, jealousy, offense, then hatred. Admire and celebrate graces and gifts, but not at the detriment of your own investment. For one last time, say, I am a blessing. Yes, sir. A blessing. The one who drove me. Those of you who drive, who, who drive me every time I come here, you notice I always tell you thank you. It's a culture. No matter how many times they drive me here, taking me back, I say thank you. Why? Because anyone who can do for you what you cannot do for yourself, owe them thanks within that field. There are many birds in the body of Christ trying to swim. There are many fishes loving trees, wanting to be on trees. No. When you use fishing to rate a bird, it will remain a failure forever. There are birds that can touch the sea briefly to pick fish, but they are not meant for the sea. Stay in your area of grace and find comfort there. I preached a message a few months ago called Rise Up and Walk. And it was a message to empower a generation. The miracle that happened at Gate Beautiful was only the final phase of the miracle. The real miracle was that the Bible says certain people carried the crippled man every day and returned him back. They were nameless, but they were the reasons why the apostle could see him. They carried him every day. Every day. The second miracle was that the man agreed to be carried. There are people who are crippled, but they will never agree to be carried where they will be healed. Rise up and walk. Number two. God is healing someone right now. From envy. What is the second key? The second cure to envy gratitude first thessalonians 5 16 to 18 gratitude gratitude immunes you it immunes you from the spirit of envy gratitude give it to us please first thessalonians 5 and verse 16 rejoice evermore it says pray without ceasing then it says in everything give thanks for this is the will of God. Your condition may not be the will of God, but the attitude of thanksgiving in all conditions is the will of God. Can I tell you the truth? Everything you thank God for grows and it multiplies. And your appreciation of it also multiplies. Philemon chapter 1 and verse 6. Here's what the Bible says. That the communication of your faith might become effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. I like that. The acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. God gave you beauty. Don't shy away from it. Thank you, Jesus. And if you think that's not a great gift, pray that God takes it away. Then you see how many things will be left. Are we together? God gave you intelligence that the communication of your faith becomes effectual. Lord, you gave me intelligence. I thank you for it. You gave me acumen for leadership. Thank you. You've made me a pastor so desired by many people. Thank you. You've made me a businessman. You've given me ideas. In the night, ideas come and I've been able to build several businesses. Someone shout it from your spirit through your mouth. Say, thank you, Jesus. One more time. Say, thank you, Jesus. 
Yes, thank him for all that he's done. Thank him for his faithfulness. When you get up in the morning, look yourself at the mirror and say, thank you. I'm wonderfully and fearfully made. I'm a testament of God's love. He's loved me with an everlasting love and with his loving kindness, he's drawn me to himself. Lord, thank you for giving me this ministry. Thank you for giving me these children still struggling with the third born. He's still stubborn, but I, I thank you that he's alive. Thank you that he's in a house where um, he can be changed. Thank God for what he's done in your life. It is difficult to be thankful and to complain. It is difficult to thank God and be envious. Lord, you gave me this. You gave me that. The story, the parable of the talent is very instructive. I don't know why God gave the man two rather than five. The Bible says according to their several abilities. But do you know the same commendation the man with ten got, the man with two also got. I used to think that there was no difference until I learned that the conditions that surrounded that, the temptations that came to all three was different. The man with five had the temptation of pride and complacency. He had the greatest talent. He overcame that to multiply it. The man with two had the temptation of envy, knowing he was second place, but he still overcame and most likely was mentored by the man who had five to have replicated the same result. The man who had one, you see that it was messy that even brought that one because the end of the story justifies that he did not deserve more. Thanksgiving. Father, thank you for my life. Thank you for breath. Thank you for health. Thank you for grace. I'm telling you sincerely, this is how I live. I am grateful, not just because I am me. Well, I'm grateful for being me, but I mean, I'm just grateful for being a child of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. See that? Grateful to be me. Every opportunity, I don't downplay opportunities. I make every dealing of God in my life a special moment. I don't act as if he would have been without God. No, I'm very vocal. Lord, look what you've done in my life. When I'm back from every service, including this one, I will go down on my knees and say, thank you. Your boy has come to say thank you. That mercy, again, your mercy and your grace. Yes, sir. I mean it. I mean it. It's not because I'm standing on stage here. Hallelujah. I had the honor this year to be invited for a lecture at Harvard University. And um, it was a very humbling time not to preach, to deliver a lecture. It's a great honor. It's a different thing if a church calls you to speak. But when an academic institution, one of the most prestigious by any standard, that they call you as a preacher, I'm not an academician. I don't consider myself one. I'm passionate about knowledge. But to invite you, an institution will not risk their reputation on sentiments. And so I remember getting down my knees. I said, Father, thank you. If it ever happens good in my life, you are the reason. And I say, thank you. Someone needs to say, thank you, Jesus. That every time you slot in your ATM and something comes out, say, thank you, Jesus. The Bible said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. And lean not unto your own understanding. He says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Verse 7 says, be not wise in your own eyes. He says, fear the Lord and depart from evil. If God is giving you victory in ministry, always say thank you, Jesus. Don't just say it in the secret. Say it in the open. When you can thank God for your life, you can thank others for their contribution to your life. Say thank you, Jesus. So number one, appreciate your uniqueness. See your uniqueness as a blessing, as an advantage. Embrace your uniqueness. Number two, gratitude. Number three, are you ready? The cure for envy, number three, very quickly, is content for growth and increase in capacity. The cure for envy, contend for growth and increase in capacity. 
For as long as you are small and you remain small, you will not be free from envy. Contend for growth. Galatians 4 and verse 1. An heir, he says, for as long as that heir is a child, he says he differeth nothing from a slave, even though he be lord of all. That means it is your inheritance in Christ. Oh, yes. Inheritance. I can spend the whole day talking about that. Inheritance. That the inheritance that a believer has is not unique to any one believer. The inheritance that the saints have in light is generic. Access to grace. Access to wisdom. Access to the Holy Spirit. Access to the resources of the world. And that you can use this as tools to create a great destiny. The Bible says the same Lord is rich unto all. The same Lord is rich. He does not show favoritism. God does not have grandsons. He has sons. Sons. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. But the Bible says, um, that's Romans chapter 8 from verse 18. It says, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Verse 19 says, for the earnest expectation of the creature awaited the manifestation not of one son, not of one unique son, not one apostolic son, not one prophetic son, the sons of God. That means there is a place for you. That table of greatness has a place for you. But it will happen by growth and capacity. Growth and capacity. Please look up. There are many people who are victims of envy today because there are many requests. I was teaching my people and I told them many things we call prayer requests were supposed to come to your life naturally through growth. Growth can deflate a man's prayer request. Many of the things that we say God bring to my life were designed to come through growth. If the vessel is small, it makes the oil look small. The oil is never small, but it assumes the shape of the container carrying it. You see that now? We can all be great. We should all be great. It's in our corporate destiny as believers. Let me repeat that again, choosing my words carefully. It's in our corporate destiny as believers to all be great. Literally be great. In business, in ministry, in politics and governance, in leadership, in every endeavor in life, it's our corporate destiny. But there's no potential for glory to anyone who does not contend for growth. Contend for growth. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. And Jesus increased, increased, increased in wisdom. Your Jesus increased in favor. He increased in stature and in favor with God and with men. With God and with men. Someone say, I will grow. Shout it, say, I will grow. Say it again, say, I will grow. First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 2. Man of God, you can grow. You can become a greater version of yourself. Businessman, there's no point envying another person. There's space for you. You don't find, you hardly find two aircrafts crashing in the sky. The space is too wide. No matter what, Boeing, whatever it is, once you only find traffic on ground, once you lift to the sky, there's enough space. Enough space. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. Why? For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither are ye now able. There are many of you God wants to do much in your life. As a man of God, it's in your corporate destiny. There are certain anointings that come to your life, but they were authorized to come to a certain version of you. That anointing has not found the version it is looking for, so it keeps going back. It will have to wait until you grow. Apostle God told me he's going to be trusting me with 10,000 members, 20,000, 50,000. No, this version of you will be a destruction and a casualty if God should sell you like that to the nations. 
No, God is also a businessman. He doesn't sell bad products. He can work on it. He's called the porter. So if the clay is not well done, he smashes it and builds it again. And he does that for his namesake. Namesake means his logo is on you. And he protects his image. God does not deliver a bad job. No. When you see a Louis Vuitton or a Gucci or whatever it is and you look at it and that shoe, you see something that you just know that someone someone has brought in a fake product because even though the right logo is there there are there are certain indices you have to find the detailing and when it is missing that's how god is so when you are bankrupt of character bankrupt of this god says no put in an anointing on this kind of person now i rather walk on the person so while you are fasting for power what god will be working on his character first and you're saying, Lord, is it that you can't bring, just bring the anointing? We'll deal with character later on. God says, no, I don't walk like that. Hallelujah. Growth and capacity. Reverend Julian did not start this way. I've had the honor of attending the Rima Fest for a few years. And I've seen the growth and progression. Do you know, when you grow, everything grows. Stop trying to get everything to grow. Just grow. When you grow, everything will rise to match your growth. Don't try to change friends when you've not grown. And everybody, you draw people who are in your future. Your future self should be the one relating with them. Just because you save their numbers does not mean they are in your realm. No. Try to call them. They won't answer you. It's a message. Imagine, I hope you are not insulted. Are we together? It's good to grow. It's like someone, with all due respect, and not to insult you, it's like someone who buys the latest SUV that came out this year, and you find the person with a gallon hoping to look for foil and put inside. You are not there. Because when you grow, all the things that support that level also grow with you. Relationships, resources, access. This is one way you measure authentic growth. When you become wealthy by stealing they will the equation does not balance something else will not grow that should support that if you are just looking for an experience to challenge yourself that's fine but i mean if you want to exist in a realm no there are some things you should preserve your honor and live until you grow so sometimes when god hides you it's his way of meting out mercy so that it, it matters how you are sold to the world. I, I hate to use that word, but I hope you, un, you understand what I mean. When you sell a product, you are causing people to desire that product. And you have to, because impression matters. Impression matters. So God wants to fix you, to work on you, adorn you, and then tell the world, this is what I can do with people who are yielded. And in one moment, you become a voice of healing. You become a voice of grace. So stop coveting certain things in anger and envy. It is already in your destiny. Just grow to the version that would have that. Apostle, I'm trusting God to be able to host a meeting like this by myself. Okay? Um, let me speak as a consultant. So show me, let me see. I can tell you without prophesying. I can tell you whether you are wasting your time. Or whether it will come to pass. Show me the capacity. The network. Are we together? Do you know how to negotiate for these kinds of things? Do you know the factors that need to be in place for such an event to hold? I don't think I'm not interested. Then you will not have it. And the greatest way to step into a destiny you desire. Is to appreciate the one that now models for you what you desire while learning from it that's why i celebrate and respect all the pastors who have left their busy schedules to come for rima fest to be inspired and to learn two things to be inspired and to learn if you see a level of excellence here beyond what you know don't assume you've always known it no your results show you don't know it so learn learn with humility when i sit here i learn 
I learn. I'm passionate about knowing what else is not working in my life. Don't be embarrassed. Learn. Learn. Why do I invite people and they don't come? Learn. The, the labor of the foolish weary at every one of them because he knoweth not how to get to the city. There is a way to influence. There is a way to power. There is a way to access resources. How did Pastor Julian coordinate favor from all of these parastatals, these businesses that are in partnership with him? He was not born that way. Men define their possibilities through growth. They define their possibilities through growth. Businessman, thank God for what you have done. But if you remain small and you don't grow, you will envy everybody. Man of God, thank God for where you are. But do you know there are greater, there are still virgin dimensions in the spirit. Content for growth. And the way you do it is by coming for events like this to expose you to what God can do with a yielded vessel. You go back provoked unto godliness. Not from a standpoint of jealousy. Lord, the same Lord is rich unto all. Let me carry this fire to my nation too. Let me carry this fire too. I remember many years ago, I used to watch Reinhard Bonke. Please sit down for a moment. I used to watch Reinhard Bonke. I attended his crusades. I mean, I saw tens of thousands of people. Very unassuming personality. And worst off, he would come and preach a very simple message. Annoyingly simple sometimes. And you know, when you have an investment of God's grace, the spirit of revelation, it comes with pride too. So sometimes you just shelve those things. If it's not working in your life, it is not there, period. You've heard my story. I think I've shared it many times in Kenya. That in one of the events, Pastor, I, I, I came early because I desired that grace. No room for envy. Who is ahead of you is ahead of you. Period. Don't argue and waste time and explain away. You are you are you are worsening the pain. Are we together? I remember I went for the crusade ground to the crusade ground with, with hunger and I saw them willing people and I said, please let me participate. And they said, well, you are not part of the committee. I said, I travel a long distance here, committee or no committee. I have to serve this grace. I held onto the wheelchair. God is my witness. I was wheeling them to the front. And I said, Lord, this is how it will also be in my meetings. No room for envy. Wouldn't it be stupid for you to hear that I'm envying Renard Bonke? Isn't it not laughable and childish? No. Who is ahead of you is ahead of you. Just find comfort. And teach yourself that they were ahead of you so that they will guide you to get there too. Are we together? When I was watching Pastor Julian as he was just churning out these strategies, I said, my God, you see, this grace bar, if it's not on your head, it's not there. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Daniel chapter 2, it says, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. If, if it's not, you can crack your brain and read books, but once it doesn't come, it's not there. But when it comes, it shows. I'm praying for you, that which is meant for you. Because you have come here to contend for growth in the course of this conference. May the mantle for the new, the grace for a higher dimension, may it rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. When I came in here and I saw our father in the Lord, I was so happy to see him. And we just exchanged pleasantries and I was eager to ask him questions. You see, this was a man that most likely when I was born or when I was a child, he was already interpreting at the crusades of Maurice Arulo here in Kenya. How do you now come to compare yourself? Because of crowd or travels? It is the foolishness of the younger generation. It is the reason why many fathers are dying with their mantles. Because we do not know what weight is in the spirit. A man may pastor 10 members, but the weight that man carries in the spirit. There is something called a kingmaker anointing. Kingmakers never become kings but they enthrone kings and dethrone kings. 
So be careful. There are people you see who may not have a semblance of certain results, but there is, there is a depth, there is a covenant they have with God. You would have called Anna the prophetess a failure, but it was her. She was one of the three prophets that spoke to Jesus and spoke over Jesus. And so when I saw him, I was in a hurry to honor him. When our father here, I do not know him. Please sit, sir. I almost feel embarrassed that he's standing. You see that? Apostle, do you have to do that? That's why you will not rise. That's why many young people will not rise. Because they wouldn't learn. Take what I'm saying seriously. You are here and you insult everyone. Well, once I am richer than you, have more crowds, I think I'm better. No, sir. It doesn't work that way. There are rankings in the spirit. Acknowledge it with comfort. Are we together now? Yes. When I stepped out of the hotel, the man of God, I'm just seeing him for the first time. He just greeted and we exchanged pleasantries and I acknowledged and honored him. Find comfort in knowing that if I grow or when I grow, that grace that I covet. Some of you, the people you now admire, the truth is that your calling and your election is even greater than the grace you are envying. But because you have not grown, God will have to make do with the vessel available until you rise. You are admiring prophets or apostles not knowing that you have been ordained to be a cutting edge apostle, a cutting edge prophet. But because you have not grown, every scripture you quote is wrong. Come on, go back and do your homework. Don't say, God, just anoint me anyhow. Be serious. Read books on church administration. Read books on leadership. Settle down, pray and fast. Build character. Build your word content. Build genuine power. And then the gates of the nation will be open. So don't go around coveting people's... Listen, don't covet a man's crown without coveting the cross that he died in. It's a cross that leads to the throne. Are we together? How did I get here? Let's round up. Please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. I'm trying to be as soft, gentle, and brotherly this morning. So number one, recognize and embrace your uniqueness and see it as a blessing. Just help two people. I just saw light. My God. Light. Light. Shama sabalika parodia sebat. You are stepping into a level of grace. We'll leave that for evening. Light. As I just said this, I saw light. Just like a flash of light. Light. There's someone God is saying, I should tell you that you have tarried long enough in this realm. There, is, there, there are dimensions you would have entered, but offense and bitterness has stopped you. God sent me to preach this message. You are truly a man of God and there is grace upon you. You are in the making but you tear down everybody. Tear down. You admire them sincerely and covet what they carry but you fight them as a way of dealing with jealousy. You will never get that, get it that way. God is speaking to you. Let, let this teaching be a circumcision, a cutting away of the old and to bring you into the new. Hallelujah. Preparing for the new. Please write this. We have to finish. I've given you three. Number four. The fourth key to deal with envy is to submit yourself to prayer. James 5.13 The spirit of envy is an affliction. And the Bible says, is any man afflicted? He says, let him pray. Father, this hurt and this hatred I have towards this preacher, this woman, this businesswoman, it is demonic because the character of love is not that way. You go back. Rather than arguing things around, go and deal with it, my God. Ah, there's such an open heavens here. I thought that this would leave this for evening, but what is God doing now this afternoon? You are fasted, you have prayed. Hear what I'm saying? 
you have fasted, you have prayed. This is a prophetic word for someone. God is saying, I should tell you, deal with envy and deal with lust. Two things. There is a man of God, this is a prophetic word for you. The Lord is saying, you have fasted and you have prayed. But what is stopping you from entering the anointing of the new? Deal with envy and deal with lust. These two things. When you get them out of the way, the mantle of your destiny will fall upon you. Write it down. Envy, lust. This is a prophetic word for a man of God. Deal with it. Deal with it. 